and welcome to worship to the folks who are here in person and the folks who are uh, worshiping with us from home. Uh, Ken Myers is here and with family. He's uh, one of the missionaries that you sponsor. And we asked him to prepare a video, which we're going to show uh, later in the worship service. Uh, and then afterwards, he'll he'll be either if it's nice outside or um, or in, you know we and we do want to encourage people to to fellowship outside where there's lovely air circulation and and, and breeze and all that stuff. Um, but to, if you have any questions and you want to follow up with him to do that after this service, but we're grateful for the video because then we get to share it in different in different media. We can put it on the website. We can uh, put it on Facebook. We can put it in different places. So grateful for that. Um, also, as a reminder, there is a congregational meeting, a brief, brief, brief congregational meeting following the service. You can join us on Zoom and for the folks here in person. And I need to read the call to the meeting, especially in the congregation of Grace Presbyterian Church to be held at the church, 153 Grove Street, Montclair, New Jersey, today, Sunday, July 18th, immediately after the 10 a.m. service for the purpose stated below to elect members at large to the personnel committee. Uh, we're gonna take a deep breath. And I'm gonna invite you to make your breath a prayer. That as you breathe in, you are inviting the spirit into your space. And then as you exhale, to be able to let everything else go. Sometimes we make it here in body, but sometimes our heads are other places. Um, so this is our, our chance to center ourselves, to make the choice to be here, body, mind, and spirit. And we also come in faith, trusting that God has a word for each of us this morning. So we're going to let... Uh, Donald will play and usher us into worship through song and, uh, and in the spirit of prayer, let us listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
words in prayer. Gracious God, as we come to worship you, we pray that your spirit might infuse everything that we say and do. May everything point to you. And Lord, we also ask a blessing. We pray that we might leave this place when we are done with our worship, up, uplifted, encouraged, strengthened for the week ahead, the journey ahead, the, the journey of faith that we are all on in our communities. Lord, bless bless us, we pray. But most importantly, Lord, we pray that again, that our worship might give you joy. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And our first song this morning is a today song, uh, Be Not Afraid. Uh, you are invited to sing in your hearts and minds. we are first honest with ourselves about how many things we fear and about how fear can control us. Let us, let us join together in our unison prayer of confession. Almighty God, your word tells us again and again, do not be afraid. But we ignore your invitation and dwell on our fear instead of dwelling on your presence. We fear things our imaginations create. We fear the people you command us to love. We allow our fear to control us. Forgive us. Let us pray silently. Amen. God speaks this to our hearts. I am with you. I am for you. I am within you. Because of God's great mercy through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Uh, let us stand and again sing in our hearts the glory of Patrick.
Just join in unison for the prayer. Oh, just join in unison for the prayer of illumination. Lord, open us to the beauty and power and truth of your word as it is read and as it preached today. Amen. The first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 23rd, and it's a, a, a more uh, day, daily uh, a version that is more daily uh, vocabulary, but it's got the same comfort as always. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Well, good morning. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I'm looking forward to reading the word and preaching the word. So today our scripture is from Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. Hear the word of the Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat. To a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like a sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. So play, pray with me, please. Yes, Lord, you have said that we are like a sheep, sheep without a shepherd. So we ask that today you could speak into our lives the, through the truth of your word, through your word preached, so that we can know more, that we, so that we can receive you as our shepherd and learn more and more how not to be afraid. And we ask it in the name of our shepherd and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Well, today I want to talk about fear. Maybe something we don't talk about that often. And yet, fear is something that is with us every day. It drives many of the decisions that we make, and often without us even knowing it. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely something we don't talk about. Because, you know, who wants to talk about fear? <laughs> it's scary. And so, you know, for a minute, I guess I'll just start off saying, hey, you know, what are you afraid of? And of course, fear is a funny thing. It can go everywhere from, you know, I'm afraid of barking dogs to, um, you know, I'm afraid of flying, right? Fear comes in so many different forms. And so just think for a minute, um, what am I afraid of? I mean, we can be afraid that something will happen to a child. We can be afraid that, um, I don't know, the stock market will crash. We can be afraid, um, I don't know, of a fire. There are, there's an endless things to be afraid of. For a long time, uh, I said, I don't do fear. I really wasn't afraid of many things, and yet, I, um, through a powerful experience, I have learned a lot about fear, and I want to tell you a little bit of the story. So, many of you know that I grew up on the Gulf Coast of Alabama. Beautiful, clear water, sandy white beaches, and as a child it was a paradise. Our parents would literally turn us out and we'd be gone all day. We'd break off little pieces of styrofoam and we'd kick out, practically to the horizon. 
and um, just loved, loved that ocean. But um, years ago, I saw a film that changed it for me. I saw Jaws, and many of you probably remember seeing that. And for some reason, that woke in me a deep, deep, uh, irrational, but, but terrifying fear of sharks. It even has a name, galeophobia. And it turned out then for this thing that I loved so much, this, the swimming and being in the ocean, being in the water, became a problem for me. I was always afraid when I went in the ocean. I always felt like somehow a shark was gonna attack me. And, um, you know, no amount of statistics about the, the, you know, the statistics of this happening mattered because fear is deep in our tissues and it's hard for us to understand. One day, many years ago, over 20 years ago, Frank and I were down um, living at the beach, which I did in the summer when my kids were little, and he was taking them fishing. So I fried up a couple of pounds of bacon and sent them off and it was early in the morning and I went over to the beach and I sat there on the shore and I remember wrestling. I was, I was like, I so want to go in that water, but I'm so afraid. But I'm tired of being afraid, but I am very afraid. And so I went back and forth and I'm talking to God because, you know, I talk to God about everything. And, and more and more, I, I, the, my, my, my terror grew. I was really almost having a panic attack. But I said to myself, you are getting in that water. And there was a, there was a, like a buoy out a ways. And I said, you are going to swim out to that buoy and that's going to break your fear of sharks. And you're going to do it. And so by the just sheer decision and will, I walked and waded into the water. And as it got deeper and deeper, I, I pushed off and I began to swim. And you know, without making many splashes because you, you don't want to splash too much, you know. So I'm, I'm swimming along and it's getting deeper and I'm getting further out. And over to my left, out of the water, jumped, pulled up a shark, broke the surface. And all I can tell you is that it seemed to have something in his mouth. Well, I don't even know how I got back to shore, but I, I mean, literally, I, I walked on water, <laughs> me and Jesus, you know? And I got back to shore breathless, and every minute that I was swimming, I, I was just thought that it, the shark was gonna grab my leg and pull me under. But I get back to shore. And I just hauled myself up onto the ground, heaving and um, terror-stricken. And um, I really believed that God had saved my life. And that was wonderful, but I was still afraid. The Bible's full of fear. We just don't always see it. We are so used to these stories that we just sort of glaze over them. We forget how afraid Adam and Eve were, or Jacob, afraid of Esau, or the Israelites, afraid of their enemies. That, that we need to sometimes have a lens of fear to read the Bible. Because it's, it's important for us to see how much fear is, is discussed there how much fear humanity actually has. And we can even zero in on the book of Mark. And, and with this lens of fear, you can see so much that Jesus went through. Jesus was afraid. Jesus was fully a human being. So whether it was the very first thing that he did was to be driven out into the wilderness, to be tempted by demons and wild beasts, I mean, we just read that and we don't even think about him as a lonely, alone human being going out into the wilderness, one to have the demonic test him, but also beat demons. Jesus went to back to his hometown. He was rejected by his own people. He walked up to lepers but everyone was terrified of lepers because you could catch it and then be cast out of your society. 
out of your community. He encountered a dead daughter. One of the most horrible fears that any parent would have is that their child would die. And here Jesus encounters the pain and the, the, the horror of this, this dead child. One of the first things Jesus did was to get out of the boat with his disciples after he had called them, and he encountered literally a wild man, the Gerasene demoniac, who chains could not hold, who, who literally spoke to him at, with the voice of a demon. Um, he, he encountered these, these terrifying things. Then his disciples, who he called, they had to encounter all these terrifying things too, and Jesus sent them out defenseless, with nothing, no protection, to encounter the same demons. The disciples saw Jesus walking on the water like a ghost, and they were terrified. The disciples had to retrieve the beheaded body of John the Baptist. This is all horror film stuff. And so we just have to get um, back to, to kind of rip off the the kind of, I don't know, the lens that we use of like the nice Bible story and really see fear. Now why? Why? Why should we do that? Why should we encounter our own fear and the fear that's in the Bible? Well, because fear is a powerful thing and God, whenever God shows up in the Bible, either as a messenger or as voice or when people encounter God, typically God says, do not be afraid. Now why is that? Why should we not be afraid? And by the way, this isn't a command. This is an invitation. God is saying, do not be afraid. I am with you. I know you're afraid. Here I am. You're not alone. God's not saying, do not be afraid, because I'm going to fix it. God doesn't say, do not be afraid. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. That's not what God says. God says, I'm with you. Because, as the, as the passage says, Jesus saw humanity as a sheep without a shepherd. Terrified sheep. You know, ready to run in the wrong direction and get hurt. There's something interesting in the story that follows the scripture reading. And actually, it's John who records this scene of Jesus feeding 5,000 people. Now, now again... Jesus is exhausted. The disciples are exhausted. They're trying to get away to a deserted place. And at least 5,000 people are kind of stampeding after them. And are, 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 they want a piece of Jesus. They want his touch, his, his teaching, his healing. And really, it's like 5,000 hangry people. Because it's the end of the day. They're hungry. The sun's going down. And... The disciples are obviously very afraid. What are we going to do with this? this, this what is this group going to do to us? And John records that Jesus asked a little boy, what do you have? Like, what's in your, what's in your basket? And there, were, there was something in there. It wasn't empty. Um, it was some loaves and some fishes. And I like this picture, and I want to offer it to you. When you're afraid, and first of all, if you're afraid, you need to be able to know that you're afraid. You need to feel fear, what fear does to your body. You have to be aware of your fear, or it will control you. And you have to say, what's in my basket? Literally, it's almost like you can think of your belly as like a big basket, and sure, you feel that fear, but what's in that basket beside the fear? We have to be able to push that fear over once we sense it and make room for God's presence, for an awareness of God's presence. And all that that can bring in, hope, possibility, resources, that fear wants to just crush out. It's, it's a spiritual discipline that I'm trying now to um, exercise in the face of my fear. And the more I've been doing it, the more I realize my fear and name my fear, sense where it is in my body, then I can breathe, I can make room in my basket for more than fear. And so one way I've done that, even though this thing happened to me 20 years ago and I'll never quite get over it, 
trying to find the meaning in it. But one thing I figured out is that day I went in the water, I shouldn't have. I was in a panic. I, be I believe that that fear was trying to protect me. Sometimes we have to listen to that fear. We don't always push against it and ignore it and, and will ourselves past it. And in other situations in my life, I've started to try and name my fear and make, make, make room in my basket to ask God, help me here. Am I, should I go forward? Should I, should I wait? What's this fear telling me? And um, I think it's actually helping because recently I was invited to the ocean with some friends and for the first time. And I, I came to the beach and I, I looked out and I said, oh, I want to go swimming in that water. And you know what? I stopped for a minute. I tried to sense just what was going on around me. I said, Lord, you're here with me. And I said what I often say when I take off in an airplane. In life and in death, I belong to you. And I'm going to go swimming. And so in I went. And I swam. Now, I'm not telling you I didn't think about sharks. I did think about sharks. But, but I made room in my basket for the joy of swimming. And the hope that, that probably nothing bad was going to happen to me. And I managed it. And I loved that swim. And so I guess I want to use that as an example of um, what the Apostle Paul says. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's not easy working out our salvation. It's not easy making room in our basket of fears for the life of God, for the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to offer this to you to to think more deeply about fear, to incorporate the reality of fear into your faith life, and to, um, to, to be able to not only name your fear, but, but then move your fear over for all the other things that God can pour into your basket so that you can live an abundant life, so that you're not driven by your fear, and so that you can uh, just continue to grow and, and work out your salvation. You know, the psalmist in two places, one says, I sought the Lord and he delivered me from all my fears. And I always say, but how? Well, this is one example of the way God might deliver us from our fears. And so I offer that to you today. And, um, you know, let's do it together. Maybe I know people have said things like, I'm afraid for the future of the church. Um, you know, I'm afraid we need to, you know, I don't know. You know what all the things people, you know, COVID's coming back. I mean, all these things. But you know what? We need each other. We need each other, uh, the people of faith. We need to be able to discuss our fears with each other and be honest. Pray for one another and help one another. Make room in our baskets for the very life of God that, that does um, help us manage being human beings in a, in a fearful world. But we have a very brave God who can give us courage. So may we go in peace as we meditate on this word from God. Amen. Let us join together in the affirmation of faith. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And now we're going to and now we're going to uh, collect our tithes and offerings and gifts for the Lord. The Lord.
Amen. Let us uh, sing in our hearts the doxology. <laughs> you for the offerings that were collected today, for the time and the efforts that people give as their gift to the church. And we ask, Lord, that whatever we do and whatever we collect is for your honor and glory and to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we have our video from, from Ken Myers. Hello to all of our good friends at Grace Presbyterian Church. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to us that, to know that you're behind us financially and in prayer. And my wife, Miki and I, uh, and our children, Evelyn and Oliver, will be able to say hello to you after the service. But in any event, I do wanna thank you and say, uh, that we rejoice in for what God is doing over there in Austria. I'm serving at the Oasis Refugee Ministry and my wife is continuing to work at the International Christian School of Vienna where she is a receptionist part-time. And the big news is though that our pastor of 23 years has decided to move to Sweden because his wife's parents are getting old and they would like to be there with them. So we totally understand that and we're so thankful that they served faithfully for so many years in Austria, but Pastor Shea has now handed over the responsibility to myself and Brian. Brian is also an American missionary, and Brian and I are now co-pastors of the Calvary Chapel of Vienna. So that is a big new step, and we pray for wisdom and guidance as we seek the Lord's will moving forward. And please do pray for direction for us as we consider uh, whether one of us would become the sole pastor or if we would continue in this role indefinitely or maybe find a pastor from another fellowship to join us. In any event, it's a new challenge and I will be wearing two hats, so to speak, as I really feel passionate about the Oasis Refugee Ministry to continue serving there. The Oasis is located just down the street and around the corner from the biggest refugee facility in Austria. Right now, there's over 500 refugees there, as far as we know, uh, coming from all over the place, from as far east as Bangladesh and India, right across the boards from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Ukraine, sometimes Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Syria, of course, Iraq, uh, Somalia, Nigeria, Algeria, uh, Morocco, and other countries as well. So it is amazing to get to connect with these people as they spend some time at the Oasis. We are not able to enter the refugee facility. It is only for refugees and staff, but we invite them to visit us, which some of them do, thankfully. And it's a very short walk to get to the Oasis from that refugee facility, which is an old military barracks, by the way. So it's not a tent or something like that. But um, their basic needs are cared for at that refugee facility, but we're able to encourage them spiritually and emotionally uh, at the Oasis and offer God's word to them, offer Bible teachings to them each week, offer coffee and tea and clothing, uh, the Jesus film in their own language, and a couple programs for children to do some arts and crafts with us. So it is a really enjoyable thing for us and really special for them as they've lost so much having many of them have left everything behind and no longer have family with them. Some travel with their whole family still. Others are, uh, only half the family has been able to come so far and the others hope to join them later. So yeah, for many of them, it is a heartbreaking time, but at the same time, we see it therefore as an opportunity for the Lord to meet them and bring them the hope and the peace that they so very much need. One family that we got to minister to a whole lot who came to faith in the Lord 
uh, already in Iran, actually, and therefore had to leave the country, is Mehdi and Sahar, and their two children, who happen to be about the same age as our children. I got to disciple them uh, quite a lot, and we just rejoice in, to hear the good news that they finally did receive approval to stay in Austria. And Mehdi asked me to testify and to share these words with you for his thankfulness for how God worked in his life. And he writes, in all of our difficulties, only one thing gave us the strength we needed, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We lost everything in Iran, but that did not matter because we gained entrance to a great treasure in Jesus. Even when our young son died of heart problems in Iran, in those days when the world lost its color to us, came Jesus, our light and our path of truth, and the difficulty could not defeat us. We believe that God is the King of heaven and his promises are not wrong. So I say amen to that and praise the Lord that they continue to grow in their faith and now have approval to stay in Austria and already found work as well and can now move forward. I also get to help out in a outreach to some Arabic speakers in, uh, in Vienna and with a church plant as it is translated from German. I preach in German and the, the leader translates into Arabic and so you can pray for that as well. It is a special growing little fellowship of about 15 people and uh, these opportunities are just indescribable how precious they are. I also get to help with uh, an outreach in downtown Vienna once a month just doing some straight up street preaching and evangelism which is a challenge but also always a joy and uh, a great special opportunity to reach the lost right there in the city center. So thank you for your support and I hope to connect with some of you after the service but if you're watching online uh, please don't hesitate to contact us through email. Mine is viennaken at gmail.com. Vienna, like the capital of Austria, ken at gmail.com. Okay, thank you and God bless. Thank you very much. And again, uh, meeting with folks outside um, after the service. Uh, let's join our hearts in prayer. Uh, gracious God, just listening to that video uh, and the idea of people just leaving everything behind that makes the, the headache of all this technology stuff just nothing. First world problems. Lord, for those who um, carry nothing in their baskets but fear and faith, Lord, we ask a blessing. Lord, we thank you for the reminder that the, the fear is there. We acknowledge it, but it's not the only thing we carry. Lord, give us eyes that see and ears that hear all the ways that you're trying to bless us, to love us, to remind us that you are and that you are with, that there is joy in the basket. There's thanksgiving in the basket. There is community in the basket. Lord, we are on this faith journey together and we are so grateful to God for that. And we are grateful that there are folks who uh, can be worshiping with us around the world and here. Lord, we pray for each other. Lord, I pray that everyone might have place and space to have those spiritual friends with whom they can share their fears. That they might not know shame, but simply support and understanding. Lord, we are grateful that you promised to give us what we need for the living of these days. To follow you. And the road is windy and Sometimes the hills are steep, but you are, and you are with, and we commit to just continuing to take one step forward again and again. Lord, we pray for a world that needs to know you, to live in that confidence that you are and that you are with. Lord, we pray for the parts of the world where there is warfare, where there is strife, where there is unrest. <clears throat> Lord, 
Lord, we pray for all the exiles. Lord, we pray for peace in our hearts and in our homes, on our streets, and in this world. And help us to understand that the peace starts in our hearts in order to manifest itself in our homes and on our streets and in this world. You call us to be peacemakers. Lord, equip us and remind us that that is our role in this world. We need you. Lord, we are grateful for, uh, for your son, Jesus Christ, who, who creates family out of strangers, whose spirit reigns, who has the power of healing, not just the, the physical, but also the emotional and the spiritual. Lord, give us wisdom to lean into you, to look to you in all things. And we are so grateful for his power, his example, and that he taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You are invited to, to stay seated as we sing in our hearts two verses of Savior like a shepherd, leave us. <laughs> to have the wisdom to fill up our cups. Um, and, and that comes by reaching out, for asking for help when we need it, and for being that, being that friend, being that spiritual friend and partner one with another. Let us go out into the world knowing that the God who knit us in together in our mother's wombs would die for us and did in the person of Jesus Christ, but is with us in power and spirit this day and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.